Hello everyone, my name is Prashant and this is the last part of this kernel debugging series where in the la in the earlier part or in the part 2 we see like how we can configure KDUM to dump a VM code to a specific location and now in this part we will see like how we can analyze that VM code which is generated by this KDUM mechanism. So we are just look, going to look some of the basic command, how crash works, what is the use of VM Linux, all these things in the this video. So let's get started. So the first thing is like uh, you have something called a utility called a crash. So what exactly is a crash? So any one of you, if you are going to means if you any one of you have used the GDB, in case of your application core or your uh, to analyze your application code, the crash is similar to the GDB or we can say it's a kind of a super set of a GDB. Uh, it's a basically a kernel aware analysis utility which is implement as a superset of GDP capabilities and which is used to investigate a variety of uh, code dump. Okay, so like we just need to pass for example in the third point as like I mentioned we just need to specify this VM Linux we are going to discuss what exactly this VM Linux and the location of your VM code to that this crash utility for the analysis purpose. Okay, uh, if you want to do some live debugging you can also do it with the help of this uh, we have something called a dev crash which is used by default for live memory image okay so we are going to see also this like how this will work and that is uh, basically you cannot change anything because your kernel uh, it will only provide you the facility in read only mode but i'm going to show you how it is going to work okay so we have uh, we so far we have discussed you have this crash utility you have something called vm code but what exactly is this vm linux Okay, so first I need to show you what exactly is this VM Linux. Okay, so yes, so if you are going to do this, you will see something like, excuse me, it is coming from something called a package called kernel debug info. Okay, this one. Also, let's see something. Okay, so this is the VM Linux. Now let's go to your boot directory. Okay, and here we have sorry VM Linux file, which is only like three to four MB, while this file is like one twenty nine MB, which is a huge huge difference. So what exactly the use of this VM Linux file and why we need to supply it to your crash? So uh, by default the kernel image which is comes along with your uh, kernel cannot be used for debugging purpose so this image which is come by default with the kernel cannot be used for debugging purpose and the main reason for that that this image is compressed uh, the reason it has been compressed because it is for performance and for efficiency reason and generally what it what is done is to is that all the debugging symbol being striped out from this kernel okay so because the no debugging symbols are available it cannot be much helpful uh, for debugging purpose but the thing is like whatever debugger we are going to use for example in a case of a gdb whenever you're going to debug any of a glibc issue you need to install a package called glibc debug so it's the same case you need in in case you are debugging a kernel issue you need a package called kernel hyphen debug info so like I said, so whatever debugger we are going to use, it requires uncompressed object file that include all the debugging symbol which is been provided by this VM Linux or the kernel debugging for that includes all your debugging symbol. So this is for load and examine executable file which is our VM code. And this VM Linux file is generated at the build time or during the compile time. And it, like I already mentioned, it contains all the debugging symbol need for further analysis. And like you already see like the size of this file is much much bigger as compared to the default one which has been uh, installed in our system. Okay. So generally you need two package graph hyphen i if you are going to do kernel hyphen debug info. So one we have already discussed kernel hyphen debug info and the second one is kernel hyphen debug info hyphen common. The use of this kernel hyphen debug in hyphen common is the files which are common to all kernel builds. It provides those files. So once this kernel hyphen debug info package is installed, 
you will find that the BM Linux file is going to be created or installed in this location or present in this location. Okay. Before going further, I'm going to show you one important uh, website called people.rated.com Anderson where you find a lot of information about this cache package. So it has a very well written cache help page. So if you need to find any information about any of the command, you can just go through it. Okay. It has a really well well written crash white paper. Uh, if you want to find this debug info package, you can find it over here up till rel 5. For rel 6, you need to have that debug info subscription. Okay. So for that, if you have the Red Hat subscription, okay, no. you just need to run. If you have a Red Hat subscription for this debug info, okay, you just need to run. Okay, for example, this is my debug info repo. Install kernel hyphen debug. Okay. Some of the common issue with this is like this is your kernel version, right? So your kernel version and this kernel debug info version must match. Okay, this must match. So you can invoke crash with the help of this command vm linux like the use of vm linux and let's see i already mentioned you can use crash for live debugging okay so look at vm linux file again and if you supply this okay you don't need to specify the vm code because by default pick up that dev slash vm code oh dev slash crash and this is what it going to give you the interface okay. now let's work on the vm code which is generated in our kdom section let's analyze the vm code which is generated in our kdom section okay so you will see a platter of information let's go through this information one by one okay when the crash utility gives us this so we will see that a platter of information so first thing is like kernel that is the uncompressed kernel okay the dump file location okay which we are analyzing it right now cpu cpu present on the system uh, where the crash is created so this is default created on this system so this system has three cpu uh, the date at uh, at what time the system crash okay uh, you can even run all the bash command using this exclamation mark okay uh, the uptime of the system during the time of crash so this system is up from for three minutes and seven three minute and seven second uh, before crash the load average of the system at that particular moment of time the number of tasks running on the system and these are also self estimated like a load name on the system the release release version okay the machine architecture uh, the memory of that system okay. what is the amount of ram present in that system now these are some of the important things like panic okay you always need to focus on this panic so panic like uh, i already mentioned in my first video uh, what kind of crash occurred in this machine it might be because of that sysargu trigger it might be because of the oops it might be because of panic so we are going to dig more about this oops message uh, in the upcoming slide or in the next slide the offending process okay the PID of that offending process the command which has been executing during the time of crash this task this is the address in memory of the offending process okay uh, in which CPU uh, that particular process is running this is the bash process running when the system crash okay so if your system has a lot of CPU cores so this cpu here refers to cpu core and not just the physical cpu so let's say if you are running a system with hyper threading enabled then you need to count the separate threads as cpu so means 
the the reason I am mentioning it over here because if your system is uh, reoccurring crash on a one specific CPU, it might indicate that there is some problem with the particular CPU. Okay, end state. Like I mentioned, the process uh, that process video. Like we have a different state. We have a task underscore running. We have a task underscore interruptible. Task stop. Task underscore interruptible sleep. So this is the status of that particular task during the time of a crash. That is, it is running. Okay. So now let's look deeper into this. This oops, which has been created called oops 002 hyphen SMP. So for that we need to new few things. So first thing we need to do is to convert this hexadecimal into the uh, the decimal value and need to read from right to left. So after converting it, this will become 0010. Just try to convert it become 0010. Okay. And if the first bit is zero, that means no page found. We need to uh, read from right to left. If that bit is one, that means the invalid access. If the bit is for second column, if the bit is one, that means read or execute. Uh, zero, sorry, let's go through this one more time because it's a complicated one. So once you convert this value, it becomes zero, one, zero, zero. That is zero, zero, one, zero. So we need to uh, read this from right to left. So if the first bit is zero, that means no page found. Like I mentioned it over here. That means the exception was caused by an access to a page that is not present. Okay. The second one is in if that bit present is one, that means the invalid access or uh, most commonly known as the protection fault. Okay. In the second place, if the value of this bit is one, uh, that means if the second bit is zero, that means uh, read or exception was caused uh, during the operation of read or execute, or it was caused during the write operation. Same way, if this third bit is set to zero, then the process is executing in kernel mode, and if this bit is set to one, that means the process is executing in user mode. Uh, not instruction flash and instruction flash is specific to 64 bit system, so you will not find this value in your 32 bit system. So, based on this 0010 and uh, right reading from uh, right to left, we will find that, uh, th that the process which is executing it tried to write a page, okay, but it could not find means some kind of protection fault which caused the system to be crashed. Uh, maybe due to bad return, or we are forcibly uh, making that system to be crashed, which we are going to see later. Or we need for uh, for that we need some more command. Okay, so this is just clear that once we converted this 0010, we just need to find like for example, if this first bit is zero, that means no page found. Okay, one means it is writing. Okay, then again zero means it is executing in kernel mode, and again zero means not instruction fetch. Okay. So the process of ending process is bash. Check it with the help of this. So all your bash command will be executing over here. So here you can see two plus are zero process executing is bash. Okay. Some of the other command you which you can run or which you can which is really helpful is bt which is a backtrace. So we want to see execution history of the offending process. Okay. So 2550 which is the offending process. You can even set it the uh, example if you can run this sys command. Okay, it's not going to show you but well, when the system load, even if you can run this command, ps grab the running process. So here you can see 2550, okay, the finding process. And the other one is the swapper thread, okay. So if you know something about the swapper thread, swapper or a PID0 is a scheduler. Just want to give you the brief introduction about it. They are the scheduler. So it is a process which delegate the CPU time between a runnable process and if there are no other process in the run queue, it takes control. 
uh, you may refer to swapper as the idle task and there is only once there is one swapper per cpu so if your system has a three cpu it has one cpu per process okay so it's just basically a scheduler process so our main offending process 2550 which is a bash okay so by default the bt or the backtrace is executing in the context of the running current running process so once you see you see all this cryptic function so it the all the call trace will list the kernel function executing just prior to your system crash so basically the bt is a good indication of what happened before your system went down okay so the main thing we need to see over here is the this exception and we can clearly see over here this is a sysrq handle so that is the system is forcibly crashed and uh, rip is basically a instruction pointer so uh, if it's point to a memory address and indicates the progress of a program execution in the memory and sysrq is the our uh, kernel function in which the replies with with the offset of plus 22 sysrq handle crash this is the our default function, kernel function so inside the set function where your exception occur okay so here you can see that the machine kxc has been called by crash kxc and which has been called by this and this this and this you can see all the call trace over here okay so from here we can find it out like this also we have a command called log Here you can see clearly like this RQ trigger a crash. Okay. So log is just a dump of your system message buffer. Okay. So it dumps out the kernel log buff content. It might contain a useful information prior to crash, but if your system has a hardware problem or purely a software bug, it is definitely worth. But uh, it is not very much helpful. But I will always say that it's always worth a shot to run this command. So once you run this log command, you will see all the plot of information. I think if any one of you run the, means this looks similar to your where log messages or your d message command. Okay. The other thing you can do, like I already show you, is you can run this ps command to see uh, the this symbol indicate the running process. We already see that the swapper process or the bash process which is running prior to crash. Okay. And here you can see uh, once your system when uh, when you run the crash command you see something like this so which you can see again with the help of this sys command okay this is 286 and this 285 because it's count the i think uh, i don't know where the one extra process is there okay the other command you can run in this crash console is kmm i which will give you the information like what is the memory status of the system during the time of a crash what is the amount of memory which has been used which is the amount of memory which has been free so this looks like a uh, clearly an idle system and the strike utilization which is completely uh, free okay. the other command you can run is mount command to see whatever the partition which has been mounted Similarly, you can see the network statistics. Okay. If you want to go more depth, add hyphen A. Uh, if you need help about any of the command, you can use that Anderson website which I showed you earlier, earlier or helpnet, which will give you the platter of information about that particular command. Okay. So if you want to see all the command which you can run with the help of crash, you can just type H. It will give you all the command which has been. Uh, supported or I think it's help. Yes, this is the correct one. Sorry about that. So this is all the command you can run. Okay, you can even disassemble the kernel function. So for example, this. Okay, the location of this from where it has been called. Okay. So crash is basically a very helpful tool in uh, in order to find out like what exactly happened before the crash 
and what are the cardinal function what is the process which is responsible for the crash it's a hardware issue software issue it is even been helpful for debugging any of the performance issue it's a really complicated one because you need to have a lot of system programming knowledge uh, before looking into these function which we have already been seeing during the bt command so this is just a little bit introduction to crash um, in the whole of the series i will try to uh, tell you about like some of the basic crash uh, which has been happening in our day-to-day -day system administration activity different hung uh, whatever the uh, hardware side issue we are facing then the second part i show you like how to configure kdom and how to get a vm core out of it and third part i will show you how to analyze that vm code so thanks for watching this video in case of any query and question you can write to me at laprashant.gmail.com thanks once again